mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our consideration today on we, as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost is the Old Testament reading appointed for today from Genesis, the 11th chapter, those verses which were read just a few moments ago. Bra House. That's Walter Gropius. Prairie style, Frank Lloyd Wright. Lights are going on on some folks. Undulating forms, Zaha Hadid. <laughs> Do you recognize the movement or style of architecture associated with those architects? You probably do, but don't even realize it. But who, though, works primarily with clay? And what does that kind of building look like? Well, that builder is God. And on this day of Pentecost, we see him building much more than just walls and roofs. By the Holy Spirit, God builds you and the nations into the church. God built our first parents by his spirit. You know the account of creation in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. And God made known his will. He said, let us make. And so God fashioned the clay. He breathed life into it, and the man bore the image of God. God built woman, and the man and the woman had fellowship with God and with each other. Man tries to build for himself. Our text says, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick from stone and bitumen from mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. So... Man had trespassed other boundaries, and that certainly resulted in one misfortune and catastrophe after another. Just read about it in Genesis chapters 3 through 9. And now, according to this text, man expresses his confounded will. He speaks, let us build and make. So man forms the clay. But he cannot give any breath of life to it. He wants the clay to bear his name, his image. Yes, those that call upon the name of man are scattered. Again, our text says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they purpose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, the name was called Babel, or Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over all the face of the earth. And yet men babble on, don't they? It's interesting that in the original language, um, the word here, we translate it as Babel or Babel. In, in uh, Babylonian, it was pronounced Babili. And in Babylonian, it means the gate of God. Did you catch that in the text? They wanted to build a tower where? To reach up into heaven. They wanted to go up to God. 
God changed that name to confusion. Diabol. In Hebrew, there are no vowels there. So it's basically B L L. Babel. <laughs> it sounds like Babel. It's Bool. Uh, it's meaningless gibberish. The center from which human divisiveness radiated and perpetuated disastrous alienation from God. If man attempts to gather apart from God, God will scatter man. St. Luke records for us the words of Mary after she was told she would be the mother of our Lord. She said, He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their minds. <laughs> and in the words of Jesus himself, he said, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. So now we transition and we pay, they shift our attention to the New Testament. God builds the church by his Holy Spirit. God came down and saw our inability to build. God speaks in order to scatter because he then seeks to gather. St. Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians, God set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, in heaven and things on earth. Yes, the word became clay. The author of the book of Hebrews puts it this way, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. I think it's rather interesting, isn't it, that God used the clay of Christ Jesus to rebuild. God then and now sends the Holy Spirit in the name of Christ. Jesus said, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. To follow this imagery a little further, he softens our clay with water. Baptism. And he breathes life into it. As a result, the church bears the true image of righteousness and holiness. St. Paul reminds us, put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. You see the connection? The preaching of the gospel, the good news that salvation is ours through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the administration of holy baptism and holy communion, all these are the unfailing and trustworthy marks of the existence of the church. By his Holy Spirit, God builds us into the church. God speaks his will to you. Jesus told his disciples, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. Because your sin is forgiven by the death and resurrection of Jesus, he tells us, If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. God has breathed his life into you. Titus tells us, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. He even marks you with his name. Remember the words of our Lord spoken at your baptism? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, God has gathered us into the church. 
and he builds you on the rock, the tested foundation. What is that? St. Peter tells us. He says, as you came to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are built upon, are built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Yes, that foundation is Jesus Christ himself. So by the same Holy Spirit, God builds the nations into the church. God speaks his will in every language. Note the contrast between the Genesis account and the Acts account. God speaks his will in every language. <laughs> it's interesting. There, uh, the Italian astronomer Giovanni uh, Scaparelli noted that when he observed Mars through his telescope way back in 1877, he had seen what appeared to be canali. Whereas his Italian term was intended to indicate linear structures, channels, the term was translated into English as canals. This incorrect translation prompted various assumptions about life on Mars. And when these assumptions were popularized, the canals generated all kinds of speculation about the possibility of Martians. The American astronomer Percy Lowell was a fervent supporter of this artificial canal hypothesis, and he expended months of his professional life trying to see what his ears had heard in Canali the existence of intelligent life on Mars. So, so that one of the Pentecost observers would misunderstand what they were hearing and then speculate about what it all meant, the Holy Spirit did not depend on the human tongue or the latest internet connected device to translate. He provided the perfectly nuanced dialect for each and every hearer. In every language, the word of Christ Jesus, crucified and risen, proclaims that this is where life is. Yes, God uses clay vessels, us. Scripture describes us as that, clay vessels. As St. Paul put, put it, but we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. That means we can now proclaim the gate of heaven, not a tower, but Jesus. As the author of the book of Hebrews puts it, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. Jesus himself is the gate to heaven. Yes, God calls and gathers every nation from all tribes, from all peoples, through the holy baptism and teaching of the word. Jesus said, in what we know as the Great Commission, and you probably memorized this in confirmation class, all authority is given has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We all know that verse, but one thing I want to point out to you, the phrase, go therefore, in the Greek, it's called an imperative verb. Go. It's like saying, Go! It's an imperative. It is not, well, when you get around to it, you might want to consider the possibility that maybe you want to go and tell it. No, it's go, therefore, and make disciples. That's our job. 
But the Holy Spirit is the one who works through us. It's Him working through us that the message of the saving gospel of Jesus Christ crucified and risen is now imparted to other people. It's amazing when you think about it. You and I are part of this building, the church, which God designed, which God built. You and I are witnesses of what God is doing through us. We can see the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy, which Peter himself quoted in his Pentecost Day sermon. He quotes Joel when he says, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we see it happening all around us. Yes, every house has a builder. And the builder of the church is God himself. See? This is a magnificent building to behold. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now